Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Morning Coffee. My name is Eric. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you all are having a wonderful morning. I hope you slept well last night. So this is going to be a general energy reading for Tuesday, today, Tuesday, November 20th, 2018. This is a general reading, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. This is not love or sign specific. This is just what spirit wants to talk about today, yeah? This doesn't have to resonate with you right now. This could be something that happened in the past. This could be something that's coming on down the line. Whatever. May not resonate at all, but that's okay. Sit down, have a nice cup of coffee with us, and let's just have a chat, yeah? Okay. Full moon is coming. It's going to be on Thursday. Thanksgiving is also on Thursday, so be aware. <laughs> all right. So let's just get into it, guys. Yeah? I don't think there's anything. Nope. Nothing else to say. Okay. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for today, Tuesday, November 20th, 2018. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, so I'm seeing yellow still, um, and that is partially why <laughs> I did my nails this way. But um, this is a really illuminatory time for us, especially with this full moon being in Gemini. I really feel like, um, you know, this is a continuation of the message that I channeled for the, you know, the full moon in Gemini reading. But, <clears throat> um, you know, there's really a lot of illumination coming to play. There are a lot of things we're learning about. Um, I did happy hour yesterday, which was great last night. It was so much fun. Um, I encourage you guys to join us for the next one, but I did an energy pull on just, you know, what was going on for us yesterday. And it was like literally all wands cards. Okay. So it's just fire everywhere. So people are really becoming aware of their burdens. They're feeling their burdens. They're tense because it's the holiday season, um, you know, Thanksgiving is coming. Even if Thanksgiving is not, you know, full of family drama for you, it does tend to be a bit stressful because, you know, you have to prepare the food and you're having a bunch of people over and blah, 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 or you're traveling to get somewhere and you're just stuck in traffic. You know, there's a lot... <laughs> <laughs> there is a lot of stress going on right now, but more so, especially with this full moon in mind, um, a lot of people are becoming very, very aware of their burdens and what's holding them back, and it's stressing each other. It's stressing people out, but it's illuminatory, okay? There are things that are coming to the surface that people weren't necessarily aware they were even bothered by or whatnot, so... Yellow is definitely the going theme. Yellow is not only illumination, but it is also your solar plexus. So this could be, a lot of the stress could be coming from, you know, a misalignment from your, your will, your higher will, realizing that, you know, you may not be, ooh, okay, I'm going to leave it there. You may not be, um, you may not necessarily be doing what it is you truly want to do for some of you. That's stressful. You know, so, but, but ultimately it's going to be okay. All right. This is all serving a purpose of you, of like kind of putting you, aligning you with your path, with your true path, with your, with more authenticity and all that stuff. So this is ultimately, it's a good thing, even though it's shitty and tumultuous. But anyway, let's see what we've got for today. Tuesday, November 20th. Thank you so much, Spirit. Okay, well, we've got one card so far in reverse. We've got the Ten of Wands in reverse. This is exactly what I'm talking about, guys. Releasing these burdens, all right? That's excellent. Now, for some, for some, there is an energy of, um, the energies are coming, the, the burdens are coming to the surface. Um, 
Some of you might be holding on to them. Some of you might be refusing, might be going against the tide, going against the flow, the current. Um, and that's just making things that much more stressful for you. I mean, you're only making things harder for yourself if you're not going with the flow. If you're not following the lead of the universe and your higher self in illuminating these burdens for you so that you can release them. But for overall, for the most part, the Ten of Wands in reverse is a release of burdens, which is excellent. So let's see what else we've got here. Thank you so much, Spirit. Okay, we got the King of Cups. That was interesting. All right, we've got the High Priestess. The King of Cups and <laughs> the Ace of Swords. Wow. Underneath the deck is the Seven of Swords. Okay. <sighs> There's a lot of secrecy here right now between the High Priestess and the Ace and, and the Seven of Swords. <laughs> now. We just came out of Scorpio season. No, no, I'm sorry. We didn't just come out of it. We haven't come out of it yet. We're still in Scorpio season as far as Western astrology goes. In Eastern astrology, we just we did just cross into Scorpio season about four days, four or five days ago. King of Cups is Scorpio energy. Um, this... You know, lately the King of Cups has really been speaking to um, emotional maturity lately. Okay, there are a lot of secrets that are being hidden, that have been hidden, that are coming to the surface with the High Priestess and the Ace of Swords. It's almost like with the High Priestess and the Ace of Swords, and then with the Seven of Swords underneath the deck, it's almost as if the universe is saying, you can't hide this, you can't hide this, or you can't hide from yourself any longer. All right, it's time to cut out the shit. It's time to, uh, you know, develop enough emotional maturity to be able to face yourself, face your demons, face your burdens and release them. I mean, <laughs> yeah, uh, blah, 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 blah. For a lot of you, there's a lot of heightened psychic uh, activity. You know, Scorpio is a very psychically aware sign. Probably one of the most. I would say Cancer is a close second, maybe. I don't know. It really doesn't even matter. They're all, all the water signs are psychic have um, strong psychic attunements. But um, between the King of Cups and the High Priestess, there is a lot of intuitive ability that's being developed. It's your intuition that is really allowing you to see things clearer than you have been in the past with the Ace of Swords, especially with the Seven of Swords underneath the deck. You know, there's been a lot of energy of um, deceiving yourself and, you know, just letting things go, letting things slide, accepting more than you really should be uh, because of an inability to stand up for yourself and say, no, I don't want to do that. No, I don't need to do that. You know, um, in, in, you know, ex accepting responsibilities for things that number one, you shouldn't be accepting in the first place because it really has nothing to do with you. Also, um, a lack of emotional re uh, responsibility towards yourself. You know, what is it that is truly emotionally fulfilling for you? The Ace of Cups to me is very expressive. You know, he is a, he's someone that, he's someone that is not necessarily afraid to express his emotions. And I really feel like for a lot of us, especially those that identify more with the masculine side of the spectrum, you're learning to be expressive and you're learning to do it in a healthy way. That's good. Okay. And this has a really, this has a lot to do with the moon. I mean, this deck has a lot of images of the moon here, but there's the crescent moon on the high priestess, which is usually there. But then with the Ten of Wands here, if you look, you've got two full moons there on that card. So this is definitely influenced by the moon. 
definitely. I'm going to go ahead and get another poll here just to see what else we've got for today. Tuesday, November 20th. Just one more. There we go. Okay. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> All right. So now underneath the deck, we've got the King of Swords. Discernment. There is really a lot of energy of cutting things out. We've got the Knight of Cups here. And, ooh, ooh, wow. And we've got the Queen of Wands. The Queen of Wands is in reverse. All right. The Queen of Wands in reverse energy is very much this energy of... Um, I'm picking up for some this is a this is a mother figure or this is um maybe a wife a spouse mother to your children um someone I'm hearing very controlling and domineering and there's an energy of moving away from this night from this queen of cups with the knight of cups energy there's a there's a, a great deal of discernment with the king of swords and between and it's an interesting it's a very interesting combination because the king of swords is incredibly detached and non-emotional but the king of cups is you know very emotionally aware okay um but you know these two are balancing each other out and there is movement away from some sort of domineering feminine energy. Um, this also could be the divine feminine. I do see the queen of the king and the queen of wands as the three D um, depictions of the divine feminine. For some, this is a pretty specific message, but for some. In the divine feminine being non-existent, uh, being energetically detached, removed from the situation, it is really allowing a lot of divine masculines out there to get in touch with their emotions um, and to kind of take up this Knight of Cups energy. This Knight of Cups energy is like making an offer. Um, it's a proposal. It's like asking someone out on a date or whatnot. It's you know, it, uh, it, it's it, it's an offer of some sort. But what I'm seeing this as right now is being able to explore your emotions. And it's funny because for some of you, now this doesn't have to be just people that identify with, you know, the divine masculine or masculine energy for the most part. This could be anybody because we have all, we all have masculine and feminine energies within. So even if you identify more as like the divine feminine or with divine feminine energy, you could be going through this too because a lot of us are feeling the effects of the divine masculine really starting to grow into his or her power. Um, but there is definitely an energy of this. I'm getting a strong motherly figure with the Queen of Wands here, okay? Um, but it doesn't have to be a motherly figure. It could be um, your divine feminine. Uh, it could be the divine feminine energy within. Um, this could be a wife, a girlfriend, a, you know, a significant other, so whatever. Someone that embodies the Queen of Wands energy. Now, the Queen of Wands technically would represent Aries energy. So anybody that it, that maybe is an Aries or has Aries in their chart, someone has left the situation. Or someone is being removed from the situation with the queen with the with the ace of swords, also the king of swords. There are a few things I'm getting here. One, there are a lot of divine feminines that have removed themselves from the energetic situation and the physical situation. That is allowing the divine masculine counterpart to explore his or her emotions, to grow up, to face themselves, to release any sort of burdens. There is another scenario that I'm seeing where there is someone who is removing some sort of motherly figure 
or overbearing, domineering figure could be a, a, an actual woman, or it could be a, a man that uh, um, embodies more of the feminine energy or more Aries energy, just a, some sort of domineering energy. But there is an emotional maturity that is coming to play here that is allowing someone to remove this highly... <laughs> <laughs> highly opinionated person from the equation, which is allowing them to release some sort of burdens, which is allowing them also, well, which would be releasing some sort of burdens and is allowing them to explore their emotions and potentially make some sort of offer to somebody. Okay. Well, <laughs> that was a lot. A lot of this has to do with the moon, the full moon, because a lot of people are becoming aware of situations that have been burdening them for many years in some cases, and now it's time to let that go, right? And like I said, the universe is saying that you can't really hide from this anymore. You can't hide from yourself. You can't hide from your burdens anymore. You know, you just can't. <laughs> you just can't. Okay, so some clarification now. I'm going to start with the King of Cups. I don't want anyone to think that any of this is going to happen overnight. No, this is a process. Especially, and I don't also, I don't want anyone to feel like I'm saying you're going to be cutting family off and you're never going to be speaking to them again. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is you are taking your power back. You're taking your ownership of your life. You're not necessarily allowing someone to influence your decisions and I'm sorry anyone outside of you to influence your decisions anymore in that sort of way I'm not saying you're not going to you know ask them for advice or anything but there's just there's been I just picking up that there's some sort of energy of someone has just it's been like an unhealthy relationship you know what I mean it's it, almost a codependency and that's coming to an end because someone is finally stepping into their own power. A masculine, some sort of masculine energy is growing up emotionally. You know, is uh, is is maturing emotionally to the point where they can stand on their own two feet. They can make their own decisions. They can trust their own intuition to guide them in the right place. And for some of you, your intuition has been guiding you in this direction for some time, but you've been in resistance to it for whatever reason. It could have been this domineering figure, the opinions of this domineering figure that could have stopped you in your tracks, but you know, you're starting to come into your own and this is a good thing. All right, so we're gonna clarify the King of Cups, please. Here we go. King of Cups, please. Ooh. Ten of Pentacles. Okay. So this, ooh, the tower. Whoa. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's a lot. But it came out. All right. Wow. Full speed ahead, y'all. We could be talking about um, cancer, cancerian energy. You have the chariot here, okay? Um, I just want to point out that the tower fell out, and that fell out on the high priestess. We'll get to that in a second. <laughs> oh, goodness. Goodness gracious me. Oh, my. We've got the Ten of Pentacles, the Star the Two of Cups, the Eight of Pentacles, and the Hermit, okay? You could be talking Virgo, we could be talking Aquarius, we could be talk talking an Earth sign, potentially. Um, my, my, my. Hidden Aspect, look at that. The Four of Pentacles in reverse. Somebody, okay, so first of all, someone has been taking... Um, has been making good use of this hermit, these hermitage, hermit-like energies. And let me tell you, it's not just us, the, those of us that have been connecting on this channel or through Tarot or anything like that, those of us that have been, um, you know, connecting in this way that are feeling this these hermit energies. I was talking to one of the guys in my class yesterday 
And, you know, he, we were talking about, you know, how was your weekend, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, it was good. I mean, I really just didn't do much. I just wanted to stay in. It was very a hermit mode type energy weekend. And he was saying, yeah, the same, it was the same for him. And not only him, but his roommate, who is constantly going out and doing stuff all the time, decided that he just wanted to stay in and do nothing all weekend too. So this is a universal thing right now, guys, okay? But someone or some people are really taking advantage of this hermit mode, okay? And this is an extended situation. It's not like it's just this past weekend. I really, me, me personally, I really don't want to be doing all that much, you know, going into December. Like, I'm really looking forward to maybe... Maybe doing something around Christmas, like if I if I have some friends that have a holiday party or like New Year's maybe, yeah, that would be fun. But as of right now, I'm still very much in this hermit mode. But this hermit mode is helping, number one, to help you release a lot of things that you, and I'm going to say me too, release a lot of things that I've been holding on to for dear life that have just been holding me back. It's allowing for this union between masculine and femininity within you to come into play. It's allowing you to align with some sort of soulmate, wish fulfillment, whatever it is you want in life with the Ten of Pentacles here. This hermit mode is allowing you to align with that, okay? You are by, by okay, and by honoring this hermit stage, you are doing the work, the Eight of Pentacles, and all of that work is serving to bring forward more emotional maturity. It's helping heal the divine masculine within from an emotional point of view. I mean, guys, this is beautiful. And with the and, and the, again, please keep in mind that this is not just love specific, but there is definitely some serious movement towards what it towards the happily ever after is what I just heard. But not just the happily ever after emotionally. This is the physical representation of that. So this includes career. Uh, a home, family, possessions, things you may have always wanted to do or accomplish in this world, things that you may have always wanted to uh, have, acquire in this lifetime, okay? By staying in hermit mode, but in a healthy way. And that's why I'm saying I'm, I am I don't really want to do much, but, you know, so certain things, like, say, around the holiday, like, like around Christmas or New Year's, I'm down for that. But anything else, and obviously Thanksgiving, but anything else, I really just kind of want to keep to myself and work on myself. And I really feel like that's not only are a lot of us doing that, um, Two of Cups, Hermit, Eight of Pentacles, not, not only are a lot of us doing that, but we're really doing the work and we're really benefiting from it and it's really helping to heal with the star but it's also helping propel us forward with the chariot okay so moving forward the high priestess we have the tower that came out uh, I do want to clarify that a little bit more, but, um, you know, the tower, this makes perfect sense because the high priestess is all about secrets, okay? Um, it's also about intuition, but with the tower here clarifying the high priestess, many of us may, or some of us may have had a tower moment that revealed a shit ton of secrets that we didn't know we really were holding on to, and that absolutely would influence the release of some sort of burdens. Like I said, the universe is saying to us, you can't hide from yourself any longer. You can't hide beneath these burdens any longer. And that might be why there are so many people that are just losing their shit right now because the foundation that they had, the safety blanket or the safety net that they had, this, the smoke and mirrors that they may have been living their lives in are, are it's all crumbling to the ground. Let's see what else we can get here. High Priestess and the Tower. Thank you so much, Spirit. What else do you want to say about this High Priestess and the Tower, Spirit? Thank you so much. I think that's about it. Oh, no. Nope. Okay. Ooh, whoa. Okay. Whoa. All right. Jeez. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Everything fell. Okay. <laughs> it all didn't fall on the High Priestess or the Tower. But it's coming out in conjunction with all of this, okay? 
underneath the deck, we have the Ace of Wands. So, creativity, passion, maybe lust for some, but this is uh, the lust towards, I'm hearing the lust to survive, um, the lust to maybe really make a name for yourself in this world, is what I'm hearing. Um, but we have a bunch of stuff that fell out. Now, creativity, um, inspiration. The tower is Mars energy, is very creative energy. Even though it's destructive, it's also creative because in its destruction, in its destructive nature, you have the ability to create something new in its place, okay? I'm going to go back to the King of Cups here because there are two cards that fell out in conjunction with the where we while we're clarifying the tower and the eighth and the and the high priestess we have the empress and the wheel of fortune in reverse the wheel of fortune is reversed the empress is upright okay this is more creative energy so this is these these are cycles that are coming to the end to an end here in conjunction with um things that have been hidden from you for a long time and um with the empress energy it's more creative energy it's abundance it's fertility this could be something that came to light during uh venus in retrograde um but even still moving forward now Venus is going direct. There is a bit of a shadow period, so it's kind of like the dust is settling right now, and the shadow period, I believe, is going until about the 17th of December of Venus being in shadow period. Uh, uh, about that time, I could be wrong, but I think that's what's happening. So this is definitely a time of dust settling, of cycles finishing up, um, which is all a good thing. This is all in service of creativity. Now, what fell over on, what else came out here, we have some cards that it, it fell on the Ace of Swords. First card that came out for that, and, and this is all clarifying the Tower and the High Priestess. So this is what is happening. This is what the, this Tower moment has brought. This is what has been illuminated for you. Justice, okay? Could be Libra energy. We've got... Wow, we wow, wow. The Hierophant, the Sun, and the Queen of Pentacles, the Queen of Pentacles, all of these falling on the Ace of Swords. The aha moment. The aha moment, the illumination. Um, I'm getting more of a motherly energy with the Queen of Pentacles. But this is also motherly energy towards yourself, okay? This is nurturing, honoring yourself being abundant feeling your abundance this is more of a depiction of the empress here with the queen of pentacles even though the empress is the queen of all queens she embodies the queen of pentacles wands swords and cups when i see the queen of pentacles i i often think or at least lately i've been thinking of the energies of the empress because the empress is very much the mother of the zodiac uh, of the tarot okay and um so the Queen of Pentacles embodies that. She's a very motherly figure. But this is your inner divine feminine, um, your inner motherly energy. Uh, this is loving yourself enough and being nurturing yourself, yourself enough to cut some things out of your life, to bring some further justice into your life. There's also, there, 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 there are some marriage energies here. For some of you, you could be dealing with divorce. You could be dealing with the impetus towards divorce, the inspiration. You may have made that choice that it's time to end a marriage or a long-standing relationship. For some of you, this is also the energies of knowing that you want to get married, potentially having met this person that you want to marry. And I feel like for, for that, that's mostly for masculine energy. Knowing that you have met a counterpart in some way that you want to marry, that you want to get to know, that you want to take to the next, you want to take the, the relationship to the next level potentially. This is definitely, there's a, definitely a lot of illuminatory energy here between the sun and the ace of swords. Also, um, downloads from the higher self, learning from the higher self with the Hierophant here, because I do see the Hierophant as our our higher selves in the fifth dimension, our fifth dimensional 
parts of ourselves. But this is also, I mean, if regardless of whether it's marriage or not, this is definitely an energy of being aware, self-awareness, and loving yourself enough, providing yourself with enough nurturing energy to bring some real justice into your life, to start a brand new cycle with the Ace of Wands, to cut some things out with the Ace of Swords and with justice, okay? All right, so next let's clarify the Queen of Wands, please, Spirit. Queen of Wands. Queen of Wands. Ooh, look at that. The King of Swords. Um, the Ace of Pentacles wanted to try and pop out. We've got the High Priestess again. There is definitely, definitely an energy in the Nine of Wands underneath the deck. Perseverance. There's definitely an energy of cutting out. We have the King of Swords twice. So... And we have the High Priestess twice. Let me just, I just want to get a little bit more here. Thank you so much, Spirit. There we go. Okay, the page, the page of Swords. And one more. There's one more card here. It flipped over. There we go. And the Five of Swords. All right. Underneath the deck is the Knight of Wands. And then before was the Nine of Wands. Um, so. <laughs> oh boy. All right, so. For some of you, if you're the Divine Feminine in the situation, or if you're just like, for me, I'm an Aries sun in the Eastern astrology, so I definitely identify with the Queen of Wands. Um, and me being in hermit mode, I'm just, I'm using my own life here as an example. Me and the, in being in hermit mode, I really have removed myself from a lot of situations that I would have been a part of in the past or that I would have continued, continued to associate with in the past. Okay. So, I mean, so you either, if you're a twin flame and you're a divine feminine, many of us have removed ourselves from that situation, both physically and energetically, or at least you're still working on removing yourself from the situation energetically. Um, and, you know, that is very much an energy of the King of Swords here. That, is, that would be your inner divine masculine saying, no, I don't deserve to be treated like this, or no, I, 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 I'm not going to wait around. I'm going to do what's right for me. This is emotional detachment. And so that would be, you know, moving away. Um, for others, you don't have to be on a twin flame situation to deal with that. You could have just moved, removed yourself from the situation. And also, for those of you that are, you know, removing some sort of... I really do see the Queen of Wands in reverse as a busybody, a know-it-all. Um, oh, hold on, guys. I want to open my blinds. Um, not like that's really going to add any light to the situation, but I do like to see the, to watch the sun come up. Um, you know, for some of you, you know, there is some sort of busybody, know-it-all energy in your life. And so you are kind of like using discernment and saying, no, I don't. I don't, I don't want to deal with that because it's really, it's kind of like a shit starter energy with the five of swords here. It's almost, it's like one upmanship I'm hearing. That would be an, an Aries that is negatively aspected. I would definitely say someone that is just a know-it-all and is trying, will go to any length to be right about something. And with the high priestess here, so with the high priest, between the high priestess and the king of swords, there's a lot of intuitive information that's being utilized right now. This is very logical, and it, you're using more than just your physical senses. You're using your extra per, extra sensory um, perception, your ESP, in order to to you know remove yourself from some sort of situation. Now you do we do have the Page of Swords here, so. There is an energy for those like feminine energies that have, you know, removed themselves from a situation or just like an, 
a, a, a go-getter, an Aries-like energy if you're an Aries. If you have removed yourself from a situation recently, there could be someone watching you with the Page of Swords um, and the Five of Swords. The Page of Swords, the Five of Swords, and the High Priestess. Someone is secretly like watching you. Now, they could be doing this. Oh, okay. Hold on, I'll get there in a second. But they could be doing this in order, and this is, main, I'm sorry, this is mainly between the Page of Swords and the High Priestess. But they're watching you and they are they might be learning from you, um, you know, trying to gain some sort of intel in in, in, an, in, <laughs> in efforts to maybe come rushing in with the Knight of Wands. But also, the Knight of Wands is Sagittarian energy. Ju uh, uh, Mercury is in retrograde moving through Sagittarius. Five of Swords is also retrograde energy, all right? So, again, this is an effect of the this retrograde that we're going through that is really tearing us, tearing a lot of people apart right now. Um, you're learning through this with the Page of Swords and the High Priestess, and you're you're using discernment and you're making some cuts. For some of you, I just picked up, for some of you, you're making these cuts in service of coming towards this Queen of Wands energy. If And this would be in the event that some, that this Queen of Wands like removed themselves from the situation. Okay? Queen of Wands is in reverse. Finally, yeah, we have the Knight of Cups. So let's clarify the Knight of Cups. Because there is some sort of offer, Three of Wands in reverse. But the three of wands in reverse fell out. Oh goodness. Oh goodness. Okay. Underneath the deck is the five of cups. Someone. Someone feels regret. Remorse. Probably for some sort of missed opportunity. And it may be with this Queen of Wands character. We have the we have the three of wands in reverse. The two of wands is upright. And we have strength. Needing strength to make a decision, okay? With the Three of Wands here in reverse, I really feel like someone decided that they weren't just going to wait around any longer. And it figures that when you make that decision, they made a choice with the Two of Wands. They stood up for themselves, whoops, <laughs> with strength, and they decided, I'm not going to wait around any longer. Three of Wands in reverse, I've waited long enough. But see, all of that has influenced somebody to make a move or to want to make a move, to want to come forward. Someone is, is, someone is getting the strength to move forward. Now, between the Five of Cups and the Strength card. Strength could be talking about fear for some of you. Fear that not, fear that you still need to make a decision, but even if you were to make that decision, you would not get the return or you would not get what you wanted, maybe because you waited too long. I'm also getting that you need to, someone, some people out there need to have the feet, have the strength to face the fact that they may not get what they want. And that doesn't mean you're ultimately never going to get what they, what you want. It just means that in this moment, you know, you may not get it in, in this way. It may just come in a different way. But also with the three of wands in reverse, this is also just an energy of it's the, the, the return on that investment, the ships that you're waiting for are just blocked at the moment. And I think for some of you that those bl it's blocked because you need to have the strength to make a decision. You got to stop. You really, for some of you, you got to stop focusing on the three cups that are spilled here. Maybe some sort of lo social loss. For some of you, this could be a relationship. Um, that had some, I had a, a, a social background 
a romantic relationship that had some sort of social social background, but now that is lost. But you see, you have the two of cups behind you. And the two of cups came out with the king of cups here. Okay? There's some sort of soulmate connection for somebody. Deep bond that is only growing the more you spend time alone in this hermit mode and you reconnect with yourself and everything like that. But the two of cups is here. There is somebody needs to needs to like, and I guess that's what's happening right now, you know, as we develop this emotional maturity, as we go through healing the masculine energies, but somebody has to understand that you have an opportunity in front of you and all you need to do is just make the decision. But the the you're not going to get the return on your investment. You're not going to get your ships to come in if you don't have the strength to make a decision and make an offer with the Knight of Cups. Okay? All right. Cool. So, now I'm going to get into the Oracle cards for the day. We're going to keep it cute with the Animal, animal Spirit Guides. And then I think I want to close with one card from the uh, Crystal Mandala deck, yes? All right. All right, Spirit, best messages, please. For today, Tuesday, November 20th. Octopus. Octopus is in reverse. Zebra. Zebra came out yesterday. Okay, great. Underneath the deck, you have snake. Okay, so octopus is in reverse. We have zebra and we have lizard. <laughs> So octopus being in reverse. Octopus is about um, someone lacking boundaries, um, oversharing. That's an energy that I've kind of been resonating with lately. Learning to put um, greater balance, in, um, greater boundaries into play. Um, this is someone that has. This could be like in the, like for example, with this Queen of Wands here. This could be um, an overreaching energy that just has their hands in everything, has their tentacles in everything, and just like can't really mind their own business. <laughs> um, but what Octopus in reverse here, to me, is speaking towards, um, you know, releasing this energy, releasing this, this, this type of energy from your life, if this is you, releasing that tendency to overshare, to overreach, to um, put your two cents in, or, or quote, give advice, unsolicited advice, something like that. This is releasing that kind of energy from your life. Zebra is a visionary type energy. But I'm going to get into reading. I'm going to read from the book here for these cards. I'm going to start, start with zebra. We've got two fire and one water energy. Well, here's water. So I'm going to actually start with octopus because that came out first. Octopus. Reaching, yearning, lacking boundaries and direction. The octopus signifies a wonderfully perceptive mind paired with a lack of healthy boundaries. Unfortunately, this results in well-intended but messy relationships. The octopus entwines itself into other people's business and shares their own without restraint. They believe that's what it means to be, quote, close. If you notice after spending time with someone that you feel drained or uneasy, the essence of octopus is at play. Begin to establish healthy boundaries. Be patient and firm. It may be a very old habit to change. I totally resonate with that, guys. Totally resonate with that. When in balance, octopus is interested, engaged, and intelligent. When out of balance, octopus is needy, clingy, and lacks courage. To bring into balance, one needs some space to oneself and some talk therapy. And that's literally what's going on here with this hermit mode. Um, we are learning to put greater boundaries in place by being on our own, by sitting with our own energies and just feeling it out, going through our emotions, doing the work to heal, you know, that is allowing us to put greater boundaries into place. And for some, that really is a pretty big tower moment, okay? 
pretty big. Next, which is first? Lizard. <laughs> okay, next is Lizard. Lizard. All right, here we go. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm being silly. Lizard, 44-44. Instinctual, sensitive to the subtle. The dreamer. The lizard is an expert in the realm of sensory perception. As if it has a sixth sense, the lizard hears what is yet to be spoken and sees what is yet to manifest. Although it is an amazing gift, it can easily wear the lizard down. Big crowds, lots of travel, or overstimulation will drain a lizard of their magical essence. This card is an indication to pull back from the bright lights and big city and return to the inner artist who's been whispering your name. And I mean, I, I, I said it. Specifically, I think it was with the King of Cups. We're using your you're using your extrasensory perception to really get to the bottom of things. This is also more of a hermit-like energy. I know for me, I've been coming, I've been getting really overwhelmed um, with social interaction. I had dinner um, at a friend's re a restaurant where a friend of mine, a very very good friend of mine, works at. And I got to a point where I finished my meal, I finished my margarita, and I was like, oh my god, do I really want to sit here any longer? Of course, I was like, sure, I'll have another margarita. <laughs> but, you know, I was really kind of, like, eager to get home and just crawl into bed and, like, relax and go to sleep. Of course, granted, I had the, I had the itis hardcore at that point because <laughs> I had a really good meal. But... You know, and I usually, sometimes I get to a place where I really just don't want to be in public, but lately it's been even more so, you know? Um, and that's really all of this psychic attunement, all of these energetic upgrades that we're dealing with right now, we're really becoming more sensitive. We are becoming more sensitive to energies, okay? This is a good thing. Honor this, you know, love this, because it's really, it really can be a lifesaver at times. I've been watching The Curious Adventures of Sabrina lately, and one of her friends, I don't remember her name, but her family was cursed by witches, and they lost their physical sight, but they gained what, what the family calls a cunning, which is like this extrasensory perception. They lost their physical sight, but they, are a, they were given the ability to see things um, other people can't see. And I really feel like a lot of us would resonate with that right now because we're developing these abilities right now, okay? And this is really a good thing. And speaking of extrasensory perception, we've got Zebra. Ex eccentric, creative, visionary. Zebras are the most precious of gems. They are young at heart, well-cultured, and have an undying curiosity about life. Being in the company of a zebra personality not only is a delight, but also opens our minds. Be prepared. Their potent magic is contagious, and you may soon find yourself in a faraway land, expanding your worldview while having a blast. Zebras also like to contribute to the global health through environmental or volunteer work. This card may be a hint to pack your bags. And I think we really are traveling. This is not just necessarily physically, but this is energetically, okay? We're traveling to a new state of being. When in, S when in balance, zebra is worldly, enthusiastic, and fashion forward. When out of balance, zebra is jaded, pouty, and vain. To bring into balance, one must go on an, adventure, an epic adventure or do some art. Finally, I do want to read what's underneath the deck, which is snake. Because I feel like that's really, um, it's really poignant. Uh-oh, where are you, Snake? There you are. Let me take this. Oh, look at that! And Tarantula is underneath Snake. Tarantula and both Tarantula and Zebra came out yesterday. My, my. Isn't that nifty? <laughs> All right, Snake. Guardian of unawakened magic and creative potential. There's a lot of creative energy going on, guys. The snake is a symbol of our highest potential. It is said that Shakti, our creative life force, lies dormant at the base of our spine in the form of a coiled snake. Regardless of whether this image rings true for you, it's well worth considering the amount of, quote, unawakened or, quote, untapped potential within. What would life look like if you woke it up? How can you stir it from slumber? 
An experienced yoga or meditation teacher can lead the way. Make haste. The snake card appears when there is no more time to waste. When in balance, snake is prosperous, creative, and charismatic. When out of balance, snake starts and stops many things. To bring into balance, one must practice yo kundalini yoga and meditation. All right, guys. So to close out the reading, I want to get one card from the Crystal Mandala Oracle. And here we go. All right, Spirit. Thank you so much. Please, Spirit, closing message. Please, Spirit. Oops. One closing message, please. There we go. And we have it. Passion of the Lion Heart. Underneath the deck is relief and repair. That's a good thing. I'm going to go ahead and read this. Card number 39. Goddess Sekhmet and Fire Agate. Yeah, Sekhmet, she is quite a destructive force. She's very much like the tower. But she's destructive in means of further creation, more creativity. And there's a lot of creative energy going on right now, guys. We bring you the empowerment of Passion of the Lion Heart. Through passion, you will dedicate yourself with an intensity and discipline that may surprise you. Passion is love activated. It is energy that moves you from within and empowers you to act in the world in ways you would not otherwise dare to even consider. Passion gives you strength you would not otherwise dare to, I'm sorry, passion gives you strength, plugs you into the eternal energy of sacred fire, and generates the ability to accomplish tasks you once may not have believed possible. With great passion, there can be great pain. The heart that loves wild and open is also the heart that can feel disappointment and doubt most keenly. The, the empowerment of the lion heart strengthens your heart to recover from any pain through the power of courage, commitment, and bold, loving devotion to what matters most to you. And we did get strength coming out. Strength came out down here with the Knight of Cups. Boop. There's that lion energy. All right, guys. So there it is. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I hope you all have a great day. And I look forward to our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah. Take care. Bye.